All right, hello everyone. My name is Colin Gilbert. Uh, today we're going to be talking about local variables and scopes and different approaches to um, breaking down scope gates so that we can pass local variables across scopes that we normally wouldn't be able to. So as kind of a uh, an intro to this, we're actually going to start in JavaScript land uh, versus Ruby land. So if we hop into a console here, uh, I'm going to define a variable. I'll say let in equals 10, right? Uh, and now let's also define a function and let's uh, let's add a little Ruby in here though. Let's call it uh, puts in, right? Um, so we'll define this function and then we'll open up the body and inside the body we want to say console log in, right? And we'll close that. Cool. And now uh, if we go ahead and call this function, if we call our puts in function, we'll actually see that JavaScript has no problem at all uh, accessing this in variable, even though it was defined outside of the uh, scope of this function body here. Now, if we hop over to uh, my terminal and we hop in IRB and we try the same thing in Ruby, we'll actually see that Ruby will not allow us to do this and we'll throw an error. So let's check that out now. Okay, so over our uh, terminal here, I'm going to say IRB and let's do the same thing we you know did in our uh, JavaScript console a moment ago. So let's say n is equal to 10 and then let's define a method. Uh, let's call it print n and inside print n we just want to put in and we'll go ahead and end that off. Okay, and now let's go ahead and call our print in method. And we'll see that Ruby will does not allow this. It has no idea what we're talking about with in. We get undefined local variable or method in. So the reason this happens is because we're using this def keyword here. And in Ruby, there's three keywords that will create new scopes. Those are module, class, and def like we see here. So the scopes create new barriers that things outside of them cannot pass over, right? So by using def here, we create a new gate that will not allow this in variable to be crossed or accessed inside of, right? We can't cross this over this line here, okay? Uh, similarly, again, uh, like I mentioned a moment ago, class and module keywords those also create scopes which will not allow our local variable in to pass over them. So now we're going to talk about what can we do to get around this problem? Can we get around this problem? And yeah, we could, you know, there's different uh, approaches you could do. It could be, you know, an instance variable that we use instead, or you could, we could wrap in this value, you know, in a method and then call the method that will return the value from it inside of this method. But that's not the approach we want to take today. Today, we're going to explore uh, blocks and how we can leverage blocks to accomplish this task in Ruby. Okay, so I've got a file here um, that we're going to use for playing around and experimenting. Uh, let's start by just recreating what we had a moment ago in IRB. So we'll say n is equal to 10. And then we want to define a method called print n that just puts in, right? And then we want to call this method print n, right? And again, if we hop over to the terminal and we execute this program, we will see that we still get our undefined uh, local variable or Google variable or method in, right? So I mentioned a moment ago about using blocks uh, to get around this. So that's what we're going to explore now. Uh, so in Ruby, blocks are also known as closures. And by leveraging blocks, uh, we're able to see areas 
that we wouldn't normally be able to see within our programs. So blocks, they will have access to the entire scope uh, within which they are defined. So if we were to define a block here, um, everything within this, this context, the scope here, would be accessible inside that block. So uh, knowing this, we're, we're going to convert our method here from using this def keyword because as we know now, def creates a new scope gate for us and we don't want that. We need to break the scope gates down. So we're going to use a block to define this method which will allow us then to have access to in inside the body of the method. So the way to do this is instead of using def here, we're going to say define method and then we will uh, give this, make this a symbol for the name of the method that we want to define. And then we will just simply add a do at the end of this. So this now creates our block. So this do and end right here, inside of here, uh, this is our method body for our print end method. Okay. So now if we hop over to our terminal and run this program, uh, we'll actually see that it executes uh, just fine. We don't get the errors anymore. So if we rerun the program, we'll see that uh, indeed we get 10 printed out to the screen. So this is really cool. Um, now let's, uh, let's take it a step further. I mentioned earlier that classes or that the class keyword creates a new scope gate as well. So let's, uh, let's try breaking down that scope gate uh, with a different example. All right, so let's, uh, let's have a little bit of fun this time around and uh, really experiment with, experiment with some things here. So we're going to, uh, again, say n is equal to 10, right? Now, here's, here's what I want to do next. Let's, uh, let's write a test and see if we can assert that the value of n is actually 10. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do here. So normally what we would do is we would require a test unit, right? And then we would define a class. Uh, let's just call it my class test. And then this class would uh, inherit from a test unit test case, right? And then we would say def test uh, value of n. Okay. And then we would write our assertion inside this method body. So we would assert yeah equal 10 and n. Right. Uh, but as it stands right now, if we were to run this file, uh, we will see that we get the same error uh, that we were getting before. Uh, when the scope that we were in didn't have access to the variable outside of it. You can see right here, undefined local variable or method in. Um, obviously, there's a lot more output here, but we're still dealing with the same issue. So let's think about and work on how we can get around this. So the way to get around this is first we need to address uh, our class keyword here, right? I mentioned earlier that class creates a new scope, much like def, the def keyword creates a new scope, right? Class keyword, def keyword, module keyword. So we need to use a block here to get around this issue, right? So to do so, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and delete that class keyword. Uh, I'll come over here to test. I'm going to delete the test portion of this. I'm actually going to keep my class, like that constant there. I'm going to say my class equals class dot new. And we still need to inherit from test unit. Um, but this syntax here, if we were to do this, is not going to work. But Ruby has us covered. Um, what we can do is the first arguments in new. Oops. Uh, the first arguments in new. Uh, can be the class that you want to inherit from. So I'll say uh, test unit test case is what we want to inherit from. We'll pass that in as an argument, right? And then we'll simply just say do right here. 
So that will open up our block right here. And now that now alleviates us from one having this outside class scope gate. Now we just need to do the same thing inside here for this uh, for the method. So we already know how to do this. We did it above up here on line three. So we'll just do the same thing inside here. We'll say define method and we'll give it the name of our method and then we'll just say oops uh, we'll just say do right here so we now have a block and this is our method body right here we're still just asserting that 10 and n they should be equal so let's hop over to our terminal again and run this and this time we see we are green we're passing how cool is that right so let's uh, let's make sure first that we uh, can successfully fail here. Let's change this to 15 and make sure that we're not just you know uh, getting fictitious passing tests here. So yeah, so in this case we'll see that we asserted that we expected 15, but the value we're getting back from n is actually 10. So we know that we're actually getting this value of n or value for n of 10 pass down all the way through all this and down to here way deep inside of our class and method definitions here so let's uh, put this back to 10 and clear this out and make sure that we're passing again and yes we are so that's using blocks to break down scope gates to allow you to pass uh, local variables across them um, the last little thing that I wanted to cover today was actually using a very different approach uh, than blocks to kind of solve for this problem. So that's what we're going to explore next. All right, so this last example is um, very different from what we've done previously. In this example, we're kind of going to work from uh, the inside out. What we're going to do is we're going to define a class with a local variable in it, and we're also going to define a method inside that class. And then we'll instantiate the class and use that method to allow us to change the value of the variable uh, inside the method and return that back to us. So um, the way that we're going to accomplish this is by using binding uh, or bindings. Uh, bindings in Ruby are a way to grab a hold of a context and pass that context around uh, and execute code within that context that you have saved off, um, that you grabbed when define when declaring the binding. Um, so let's just hop right into it so that you can see what I'm talking about here. So let's first um, just start with defining our class again. So let's say class my class, and let's just go ahead and end it right here. Um, before we go any further, I want to first say one thing about this here. So let's hop into IRB. Normally when you define a class, uh, let's do our class here and we'll just define an empty class. When you hit enter on this, what gets returned back normally is nil. So we can see that here. In this case, um, this is not what we want here. We actually want to get something back from this class and what we want to get back from the class is the internal context of the class so the way to do that um, just like methods uh, how when they evaluate the last expression within the method that's what's returned from the method um, class you can you can you know get a similar result from so if we say this again say class my class <clears throat> excuse me and then inside of here we say binding and then end it off. When I hit enter here, you'll see that uh, actually what we don't get nil return here. We actually get a binding object, right? So this is what we want. This binding object holds the entire context of inside this uh, class definition of my class. So that's what we're going to use with this last approach here. So going back to our example here, let's again say n is equal to 10. All right, and then uh, I said we want to define a method that would allow us to grab this value and change it, right? 
and return it back to us. So what we're going to do is I'm going to define an increment method. Uh, that method, we wanted to take an argument for a variable. And then we wanted to also take in a binding context. And then we wanted to take in the uh, value with which we want to increment the variable by. So the way this is going to work is we're going to take our original value and we're going to set that equal to um, the result of evaling uh, the string of the variable that we're going to interpret interpolate right here. So we'll say var right there. Now the way eval works, if you're not familiar, um, it'll evaluate Ruby code that's passed in as a string to, as the first argument, and then uh, also, you can pass in a binding context to it, and it'll execute that code within the context that you pass into it, uh, which is really cool. So we'll say binding context here. So that's going to get us our original value. So when this code executes, when we call this method later, and we say in, it's going to give us this value of 10, because the binding context that's being returned from this class knows about our in variable here okay so that's the first part of this method and now the last thing we just want to do is we just want to say original value uh, plus equals increment okay so the last thing that we want to make sure to do from here is we want to return our binding context right so we'll come down here and we'll just simply say binding but this in itself is not enough uh, we want to save this off uh, in a variable so that we can use it later, right? So let's just say bind context equals my class. And yeah, now going forward, let's go ahead and give this a whirl here. So if we were to say now, uh, let's instantiate my class. So my class dot new, and let's call our increment method on it. Now we need to pass in our arguments here. So our first argument is the variable that we want to uh, use in the, with this method. So we want to use in. Now we can do in, in as a string, or we can do in as a symbol. Uh, I'm going to do a symbol here. Uh, and the reason we can do it also as a symbol is because we're interpolating it inside of a string here, and it'll work uh, just fine like that. So in is the first variable that we want to pass in here. The next thing we want to pass in is our binding context, which we've saved off into this local variable here. So we can just simply come back down here and say bind context. And then the number that we want to increment it by, uh, let's just say 40. So uh, oh, before we get too far, let's go ahead and put this so that we actually see something printed out to the screen. And now if we hop over to the terminal, and we execute this program, we should see 50 showing up right here on the screen. Oops, I'm in IRB. Uh, let's run the program actually. Uh, Ruby, local variables and scope gates. And indeed, we see 50. So this is really cool. Um, bindings are, uh, you know, s somewhat odd and I, I don't really know how often they're used. But it's really cool that Ruby allows you to do these sorts of things, you know, with blocks and bindings. It allows you, you know, Ruby offers you ways to accomplish all, any and all of the crazy fun things that you could want to try and do in your programs. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational and uh, I will see you all in the future. Thank you so much. Later.